Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to some more Scrap Mechanic Survival Unleashed. I am here going to bring you today's episode, which was completely lost last night. I recorded and uploaded and edited all this time to make this drone right here. And um, yeah, so basically my GPU crashed and I lost all the files and I, I don't know. I was being big dumb and I shouldn't have deleted some stuff when I... I have to redo this all over again and I was kind of sad. But we're back and we're going to try to build this again from scratch. So the goal was and still is to recreate this sort of base. However, we're going to make sure it can fit and stay light enough to be twisted and turned and also have enough functionality to be able to harvest and farm fruits and vegetables and whatnot, and then be able to dispense those vegetables off into the collecting station thing and we're bobber. So let's start with putting down the base. And in fact, I'm actually going to just shortcut it by <laughs> pretty much duplicating exactly what I made over here. I'm trying to just make a better version of it because I thought of something last night as I was frantically looking for any way I could recover the files that I lost. I thought of a way I could improve this and it might work, it might not, but we shall see. So essentially what I have here for the base is logic gates, sensors, more logic gates, a piston, which is actually completely unnecessary. So let's just start off with that. So we just need to find where our logic gates are. Put one in the back, let's make it face upwards. We're going to leave this block there and then we're going to place down another block of logic gates and what's my call it and thingamabobbers. Okay, perfect. Now I need to designate which is going to be the front and back. And from the looks of it, if I pick this up again, oops, it's not even connected. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. From the looks of it, if I pick this up and place it down, it's going to be this way. So let's just put the left side as the back and right side as the front. I'm just going to call it white and black because that's what I did over here for no good reason. All right, I'm going to put these switches here preliminary. Prelimi preliminarily, I believe, is that is that the word? Preliminarily, put the switches there. Yeah, I think so, or preemptively. There we go, that's the word I was thinking of. All right, now I've placed down the controllers in the wrong spots. <laughs> Let me put this back to where they belong, right here in the middle. And finally, we're gonna put our movement functions, AKA bearings and pipes right here on the side. Final touches for the base will be putting down the four wheels, small wheels, and these will be the non-negotiable, not changing wheels. Yeah, I think that's proper. And it looks pretty good, honestly. It looks like a pretty good small base car. So now all I gotta do is just fix up the logic here. And by that, I mean set up the controllers. What I have are front controllers and rear controllers. Now all I gotta do is just set them to the 360 degrees and rotation. I'm gonna bring up the speed by one as well. And this one will be in the back, so it'll be going backwards 360 degrees, loop, speed up by one. All right, testing out the movement. It just goes forward a little bit like that, and it goes backwards also. I mentioned in the last video that never will get released, unfortunately, I put a lot of work into it. But I mentioned that I don't know exactly the best settings to um, prevent the, I guess, angle lock from the controllers because it's, you know, 360 degrees, it goes back to the last known cycle. So let me know if you guys know a good setting to put on or if I can just experiment and figure it out myself. Because I'm down to do either, but it's much better if you guys can let me know because, you know, viewer engagement and you guys are helping me out. Some final detailing issues I ran into last time was trying to make sure to get the car twisted or enabling the car twist twisting of the car i don't know how to call it what to say about it just making sure the car gets turned around on these little intersection things because there was so much weight on it the car would just kind of stay in place due to the inertia so essentially uh what i did here was add guide rails or i guess clamping pipe rails i don't know just simple like that off the ground and in tight so it should be pretty good like this and i haven't had a problem with it there is a little bit of variability that gets added to it but i think for now this should work just fine and now finally for the i guess farming functionality we got the movement all done kind of we still need to change this actually to be a sensor for red color and then 
I think that's all we need. And then we need to make sure this gets actually attached to the back. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and now because of this piston being pointless, I'm actually going to start off this drone with just a regular block right there. And if I want to, I could maybe attach a bearing and have it twist around, but I think that might cause too much, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And so I'm just gonna put two blocks down instead of a piston and a block, and then attach pistons to those. And now all we need to do is just make sure we get our chests in the right place. And I have them backwards facing and up by one, I think. Okay, now that is the collecting chests down. And now I need to add the sucker up function or the harvesting, if you want to call it like that. I realize I could maybe put pipes here and have it up a little bit higher, but I think I want to keep it like this for now because the pipes here would mean that I would have to have this, have the piston actually be working it going up and down to make sure it can collect the uh, farm materials. So we're just going to put the pipes and vacuums like so, have them suck up, and then we are going to add the dispute dis distributing. Uh oh, what is this? Wow, it's been a while since I've heard a tote bot. Anyways, so let's get to the distribution. And my idea was to redo this entire intersection. You can kind of see me actually start tearing it down already because I wanted to test it out. Basically move this track over by three and then have some sort of intersection where the car can come in depending on what it's dropping off. So if it's dropping off tomatoes, it's gonna to come in, turn to the right and drop off tomatoes. And then I'll probably have something right here where it can turn to the right again and then leave. And then if it needs to drop off, you know, carrots or broccoli, it'll come in on this side or maybe come in in the middle and then turn whatever it wants. I am not entirely sure exactly how to do that yet, but I think I can figure it out when I cross that bridge. Wait a minute. I don't think that's how that saying works. Oh no, I completely forgot. I completely forgot to add the most important part of this whole drone, the stick guider. Okay, now that we have that in place, we are now good to be on this sort of track. I had to extend out these pipes like so, in order to make sure that this vacuum pump gets just low enough to be able to fit any sort of fruit or vegetable that needs to get distributed. So let's make it move backwards a little bit. As you can see here, the pipes are red. Let's move it back a little bit more and actually stop it like we're supposed to. So let's find some carrots, put them in and see if the distribution still works. Okay, so this is saying yes and that's saying yes. Let's just grab something real quick. Snag that in there, perfect. Perfect. Perfect, okay, cool. Now we got carrots and distribution working properly. Let's finish up and make it even on both sides. If you guys are wondering why I'm having it like this and it looks like, I don't know, Medusa or some sort of snake octopus thing, it's because I wanted to make sure that this collection process was way more efficient than the previous one. <laughs> oh my gosh, this thing was completely horrible. And I mean, it works because it looks cool, kind of, and it's small and compact, but it didn't really get uh, the job done as efficiently as I would like. To dive further into what I mean by that, I mean by I want to change how the collection goes, as in instead of having the car come to every intersection and see if it needs to turn to the right, come over here, harvest, come back, and then turn back, and then go back, and repeatedly do this, that's just so many extra steps and super inefficient. So, due to, what the heck? But due to a comment that I got giving me an idea and my own intuition, I decided that it would be better if we had farms on both sides. We have a farm plot over here. We're gonna reduce some of this so we don't need it to be as big. And then we'll have some more over here. And then as the car will go down, if the plot needs harvesting, something will go on, a red block will come up triggering the car to stop, and then another block will come up telling the drone to, uh, what's it called, go out and harvest. And actually, I forgot to add that logic. So let's do that really quickly. And harvesting logic is actually gonna be pretty simple. I think it only needs to be a single logic gate and we're gonna make it an ore. And it's gonna connect to both pistons, like so. And both pistons are gonna extend out by nine or 10. 
Let's do 10 for now, and then we can test it with a button. Let's pretend that we have some potatoes harvesting. I am going to have to move this whole farm system, actually, somewhere else because there is a bug. Well, not really a bug. It's basically just the terrain doesn't allow soil to be placed in certain places, so I can't actually complete uh, the farm plots. Also, I can't actually place soil down at all. I don't... I don't know what that's all about. I think it might be my unlimited inventory mode. So we can fix that though if we reload the game. Back to the demonstration. Let's pretend those potatoes are harvested. The sensor will sense them telling them, hey, this needs to get, you know, fixed and whatnot. So let's stop it right here. We will figure out the exact position of which to stop the drone. And I think it's just gonna be somewhere making sure that this is towards the middle plot like that. We will also connect this logic gate to the harvesting vacuum pumps. I forgot to do that. And basically another block will come up and go on to this secondary sensor that's back here, which will be some color mode of, I don't know, green for plant. And once it does that, it will turn on this logic gate right here, and then that will cause the pump to try to suck up, and there it goes. We now have potatoes and seeds, and eventually those will be the vegetables, respectively, from the packaging station. And then once that goes out for a small amount of time, we'll have a timer, it will come back in, and then it will be set on its merry way, like so. And then it will do that repeatedly on both sides for tomatoes, beetroots, uh, carrots, and broccoli. It'll be good. I think that's probably the best point of action. The only hard part is figuring out exactly how to make sure it goes to the right station to stop at, to distribute whatever it just picked up. For the sense of turning, I've decided that I'm going to actually make every single intersection and every just regular turn, even if it's just a normal one like this, use this sort of system. I know it will slow down progress, but I think it'll be more consistent and be less prone to like stopping and getting stuck on things than having the car try to turn itself. Although there may be another solution. So let me know if you guys can think of anything else that might work. Now that we have this set up on the test track, I made sure to turn on this switch and that means it should turn to the left. And I tested this out before, so hopefully it works again and it'll come. The red thing comes up to stop it. It twists on the system and drops down again and gets set on its merry way. Near perfect, actually. That was pretty good. I think that we're going to keep it like that. However, the one change I had to make because this was so heavy was extend the height of the piston. Previously, it was at three. So the piston only went up three high, turned, and then went to the left. However, because this was so heavy, the piston... Oh, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be turning on your own. Basically, the piston just couldn't carry it, but extending the piston up even higher made it just barely get enough hot clearance to be able to turn. So that was good. And that also means that I can't add too much more weight on here. So there will be no more pipes or pistons or, well, there might be more pistons, but there'll be no more pipes or vacuums and chests. I know that. I did kind of just breeze through that entire build really quickly. It took me a little bit over an hour to build that one. But now that I kind of know what I'm doing, it only took 20 minutes to do this, which is kind of crazy. But that means there's more time for me to do something else. And for that, I'm going to try to see if I can engineer and think of the best way to distribute the vegetables properly. That is kind of the next task I want to tackle. And then I'll fix, do the farming thing at some point. I'll probably do that later. I know there was a new update that came out, but everybody and their mom has probably already did videos on that with oil collection and automation and stuff like that. So I will get to that in another episode, but make it with my own twist. I'll probably use drones instead of pipes like everybody else is using because <laughs> drones are fun. During my processing of intelligence or unintelligence, I just realized that this isn't going to work at all because if I decide to use this system for every single corner, I will need to raise up this platform. I can keep the platforms, you know, this high because of this incline right here. However, on this side, I would need to raise everything up or make find some way to make sure that this can you know all be fit and only like a two block high thing and that's just not possible i have a feeling i'm going to probably have to do with this whole white line turn left system again i think we're going to have to stick with that and then figure things out from there so i actually might have just come up with a temporary solution for certain corners like this so what i've done was actually just put a wedge block down right here and 
I put a secondary pole of guidance in the rear of the vehicle. This might cause problems later, but for now it kind of works. So the car gets stuck and the secondary pole of guidance keeps it pivoting all the way up until the point where it is straight enough on this path to go and it works. So that could be a way for me to get these sort of corners down easily. And then I think I can actually make this dynamic as well. Oh my goodness, I just thought of a painfully simple solution that I think actually works. <laughs> oh my goodness, if this works, I'll be very upset because I could have thought of this for earlier ideas and subjects, but right now it's not working. So what's up with that? Okay, I think I may have figured it out. I could, I might need to fix some things here and there, but I think I've got it figured out. So basically what I can have is a, I guess split path to forked path entry. I don't know what how to call it. So basically what I have here is a bridge that will take an input coming here or an input coming here. And we will have a switch which rotates it left or right, depending on where we'll have a sensor or something right here. Basically meaning that the car can come in and then turn into a centralized path. With that, that means I can allow a car or say this drone has picked up some tomatoes and or beetroots and then it's driving along the track and it's saying, oh, I have beetroots, so I'm gonna turn to the left so that I can drop off my beet loot, beetroots and whatnot. So it'll come down, turn to the right, come here and be like, all right, stops wherever it needs to stop, drops them off, comes here, it drops them off, and then it will come to this intersection, which will be right around here, and it will go straight and leave, and that'll be the exit path. And then same thing with corn. So once it comes over here, it'll keep moving past that beetroot side and then turn to the left and then come over here and turn it over to the right side. Yes, it may not make sense in words, but it makes sense to me in my head. And once you see it, I think it'll make more sense for you too. We will move this logic all to the control panel rune eventually, but this will be where it goes for now. And I need to make sure it's out of the way of this pipe because there has been issues. And let's say it's now dropped off its carrots and broccoli. It sees this intersection. It goes, okay, cool. And then bada bing, bada boom, it's made its turn due to the back guiding pipe and whatnot. And now it's caught on something. Oh, it's caught on this logic right here. It's unfortunate, but I'm gonna have to remove you and probably move you to the control center too. Although I don't really want to, because it looks cool, but you know, it's fine. We gotta make room in the way of progress. Sacrifice is necessary. And there we go, Bob's your uncle. So that's the, I think that's what it's gonna be. So I actually can probably use this method to do the regular corners on this side too. And that'll probably save a lot of space and time and logic for me. So that's pretty good. Awesome, that's so exciting. So next episode, I will be working on the dynamic track. And that means finishing up this drop off area, but also setting up and redesigning this so that we can have the dual farm system going off that will also tell when this drone will stop and harvest and everything else. But until then, I hope you guys have a great morning, afternoon, night, or evening, and I will see you next time.